Okay, so now that our points are set up, I'm gonna to begin to track the footage. So I'm gonna click on the Analyze Forward button. And now you can see all four points have been tracked simultaneously. Now the difference here is we don't wanna apply this tracking data to our Los Angeles footage, but instead apply it to our dark lime green solid. So I'm gonna click Edit Target and make sure that that layer is selected. And then I'm gonna choose OK, and then we click Apply. And then it takes us back to our composition and a bunch of tracking data and a corner pin effect has been applied to our dark lime green solid. Now, what we need to do is turn this layer back on and you can see the lime green solid is now covering over the gap sign. And if I scrub through this, you can see that the sign is covered up by this dark lime green solid. Now we could add our own sign, but it might be a little tricky, but let's give it a shot. I'm gonna select the layer choose layer pre-compose. Now for this type of shot we want to leave all attributes in this comp meaning this corner pin effect must remain in this comp and then I'm going to choose OK. So now nothing's really changed everything is the same except now we can alt double click on this dark lime green composition now that it's a comp and reveal the layers inside. Now the layer is back to its original size and inside of this comp it's basically squished down using the corner pin effect. Now if I go back to our pre-comp I could add text to this layer. So I'll take the text tool, click in the composition and type VCP. And then I'll take the arrow tool and we'll scale this up. And we want to scale it up to really stretch this particular document just about like that. So now when I go back into my LA comp you can see our VCP logo is on the wall and it's looking good. Now we can also go back in here and scale this down as needed to make it look proper in here. We can also use an image to replace the sign as well. Now back to the comp as a final touch, you might add a slight fast blur to your text since video is usually a little bit softer than graphics. So I'll select the comp, choose Effect, Blur, Fast Blur, and we'll set it to maybe 1 or 2, maybe 0.5. So that way it just looks a little bit more realistic. We can even add a glow, Effect, Stylize, Glow, and turn the glow intensity down to 0.5. So there you go, video co-pilot right on Hollywood Boulevard in LA. Now if I go back to my project window, I have a shot of Sam and Tino and what I'm gonna do is take this footage, drag it into the make new comp button, it's gonna create a new composition, and then I'm gonna double click on the footage in the composition, and this is gonna allow me to motion track it. And what I wanna do is motion track his ear. So I'm going to click on Track Motion. Our tracker point pops up, and I want to position this right on his ear. And I'm going to click Analyze Forward. That's pretty good. So now I've tracked his ear. So what can I do with that? Well, let's take a look. First, this data is raw tracking data we want to apply it to what's called a null object. Now if I go back to my composition for a second, I can create that null object. So if I choose layer, new, null object. Now a null object just looks like this. It doesn't render, it's just a viewport helper. And it's also a layer that allows you to store information that you can use for other things. So if I go back to my Sam and Tino track layer, I can click edit target, and choose that null object as the receiver for this tracking information. Then I choose OK and click Apply. X and Y, OK. OK, now we're back in the composition and now this null object has the tracking data applied to it. And so if I scrub through the video, you can see that null object is basically stuck to his ear. But the null object doesn't actually render, it's just there to help us. So what could we use the null object for? Well, what I'm gonna do is create a new white solid. Choose OK, make it comp size, OK. Then I'm gonna take the pen tool 
And what I'm going to do is just create sort of a thinking box. And we can also click away and then click back on the mask and adjust the points if it's not perfect. Because this is not perfect. And we can also click on the points and use the up and down arrow keys to move them. And I'm just clicking on one point, holding down shift, and clicking on another point. And that way I can just kind of move the points and get the shape I want. And then I'm going to take this thinking box and just kind of move it near his head. And now I'm going to take the text tool and just click inside of this box and we're going to type I'm lost or something funny. Um, you know, it's up to you. And now that we've created our thinking box, what I can do is take these two layers, hold down shift and select both of the layers. Then take the parenting pick whip and drag it to the null object. And now if I watch this, you can see that layer is now connected to that track point because this null object follows that distinct point. Now we can shut the null object off, we don't really need to see it and at any time we can adjust these layers and reposition it as we need. Maybe we can move this point down and move this up above him and it will still follow along because it's linked to this null object and that's the great thing about parenting. Now we can also take this white solid and this is the button to show or hide masks. We can shut them off since we want to kind of see what we're looking at. And I can choose effect, perspective, drop shadow. And then I can just kind of create a little shadow for uh, our thought box here. So this among other things are great ways to use tracking data. Now one other way we could use tracking data, I'm going to create a new black solid. And then I'm going to choose OK. And then I'm going to choose Effect, Generate, uh, Lens Flare, our favorite lens flare. So here's a great lens flare. And what I'm going to do is hit F4. And I'm going to change the transfer mode to Screen. So now we have our lens flare here. And I'm going to go ahead and just shut off these two layers for a second. And now what if we want the lens flare center point? So see how we can move the center point here? What if I want the lens flare to follow that point? So say instead of tracking his ear, we tracked you know, a light or something like that, we want to have a lens flare connected to it. Well, the way to do it is select the null object and hit the letter P. And that brings up the position. Then select this layer, bring down the effects, bring up the lens flare and now we have our flare center. Now the easiest way to do this is to alt click on the stopwatch for the flare center. That brings up all this crazy stuff but don't worry just take this pick whip and link it to the position of the null object and what that is going to do is always make sure that this data is the same as this null object. So watch this. Now I don't know why you'd want someone's head to be glowing, but uh, if you did, then this tutorial is right up your alley. <laughs> but in this case, you know, you can see the idea. Now for some reason you don't want to use this pick whip expression, you can alt click on the stopwatch and that removes it. You can also select the parameter position, choose edit copy, select the flare center. This is where we want to paste this data, choose edit paste and that actually copies the actual keyframes from this layer to this layer so you don't have to use an expression but I think expressions are useful and a lot faster well I hope you found this tutorial useful um, you know and uh, just be careful if you really have a friend out there that has a lens flare coming from his face you might want to think about who you've been hanging out with I'm Andrew Kramer and thanks for watching